Today we're looking at the camshaft position sensor. That happens to be code P0340 if your check engine light is on. Now if you're not exactly sure where the camshaft position sensor is located on your vehicle, just do a quick Google image search, type in your year, make, model, and very often you can quickly pick up images showing where the sensor is located. But let me show you where it's located on this vehicle. Now this happens to be a fourth generation Nissan Maxima. <clears throat> this is a 1997 model. Passenger side, or the right hand side, that's your power steering reservoir. And right here is where the, position, the camshaft position sensor is located. So we'll do a couple of tests. We'll test the harness, we'll test the sensor itself, and I'll also note a few other things that you can look at if uh, you do have this trouble code on your vehicle. Now this repair video will be on our website at carsandtoys.net under auto repair and under the trouble code heading on the website. Before we begin, I just want to note that if you do have a problem with your starter or your starting system, it could throw a code P0340. Now if you need a, a guide on how to replace a starter, I'll include a link below showing how to do that, but if you do have a problem with your starting system, fix that first before you tackle this job. So the first thing that we want to check is that we have continuity. Continuity means that two points make a connection. So here we have the harness connector, that's this wire and this plastic body. So we need to remove it, you have a plastic tab, just push in the tab with your thumb and pull on the body. And here's your harness connector. Now, the question is which terminals do we touch? Again, do a Google image search, a Google web search on your vehicle and you can quickly dig up what you need to do. In this case, we need to test terminal two. So the terminal on the left is number one, terminal on the right is number two. And to do a continuity test, you need a digital multimeter. Now, if you don't have a digital multimeter, you can pick them up at Sears, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's, Advanced Auto Parts, AutoZone, they all have them. They're maybe around 15 or $20. And what you need to do is turn the setting to the continuity setting. Now that's this symbol right here, almost looks like an audible uh, alert signal. And make sure you have good batteries in here. Now, as you can see, you have two wires from the multimeter, a red and a black wire. Your black wire always goes to ground or a very good metal point. Red goes to the harness connector. Again, we need to test terminal number two. And as you can hear, we have continuity. And that's what you want to hear. If you do not hear anything here, or you're not getting continuity, check the harness back here, the wiring. Maybe they're frayed, chewed up, something is wrong with it. So just check the, the wiring, and that's usually your problem. The other thing you could check is the engine grounding points. That happens to be these two guys right here. You can loosen them up, clean them up, reattach them. But you just want to make sure that you have a uh, good continuity reading. Now if you have a good continuity reading, the next step is to check the sensor itself. So what I'm going to do is remove the sensor from the motor here. We'll put it on the bench. We'll take a look at the sprockets and we'll also do a uh, resistance reading on the sensor. Now this happens to be a 10 millimeter. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is just visually take a look at the uh, at the sensor. Is it chipped? Is it marked up? This one is in good nick. Now if you do see some chipping, you also want to check the cam sprocket. Look in the hole we pulled this sensor out of and make sure it's not chipped. If it's chipped, then you have a bigger problem on your hand. But just make sure that this is nice and clean. It's not marked up like this one is. So this is in good nick. So what we're going to do is an ohms reading test. Now for this vehicle, there are two different types of cam sensors. There's one made by Mitsubishi, and there's another one made by Hitachi. So what you have to do is look up your vehicle. Again, use Google Image, Google Web Search, go to a website specific for your vehicle. You can really dig up this information pretty quickly. But what you want to find out is the resistance or the ohms reading that you should have. Now in this case, we should see between 2,000 to 2,500 ohms. And let me show you how you can do this. So what I'm going to do is take and you don't have to do this, it just makes it easier so I can do uh, two things at one time here. So what I'm going to do is take an alligator type wire, clip one end 
to the first lead on the multimeter, and then the other end will go to the first prong on the left. It doesn't matter which prong you touch. Whoops. And then we'll grab the red lead and connect it like so. This is so you guys can see this on camera. Uh, you don't have to do this. You can just directly touch the multimeter lead directly to the sensor, but this just makes it easy so you guys can see this. And then, let me zoom back in here. We are 2.2, or in other words, 2,200 ohms. So this sensor is working correctly. Now, if you don't get a reading here or a very, very, very low reading, then this sensor is no longer good and you need to replace it. Thank you.